Okay? You're learning all the time. Every piece of information you learn, you learn that way. You can't, your brain is always changing in that way. Always. Your brain never sits still. It's always changing. Right? To learn a new idea, you have to change brains. What is the role of language in doing that? Each word activates a frame. The frame is in a system that activates something else. Now what you want to do is activate a nurturant frame, the nurturant system. You want to use language that activates that and not use language that activates conservative systems. So how does that work? Why is it that the conservatives are so good at all of this? The answer is they learned through marketing. <laughs> they learned that if you use the right words that activate their system and you repeat them over and over, you strengthen that way of thinking about the world because language is not neutral. But what did journalists <coughs> learn in graduate schools of journalism? I sometimes lecture in the Berkeley School of Journalism. Every time I give a lecture like this, somebody raises their hand and says, that's the opposite of what we're taught. We're taught that language is objective, that we just use the most common words, and it will fit the world. And that's what we're supposed to say. And you say, no. If the conservatives have used those words and gotten them out there, every time you use them, you're promoting a conservative idea. Right? You have to, if you don't believe that idea, you have to not do it, but it's not neutral. Your reporting is usually not neutral. And you have to know that and be aware of it. And they don't want to know that. They want it to be neutral. They don't want that responsibility. And they don't want to be an have to answer to the pe their editors and people who've hired them to be neutral. They're safe if they use the most common words. Right? Same is true of pollsters. That's another story. Okay, now. This is something that you have to deal with as environmentalists. So one of the questions is, how do you, if you look at the language of environmentalism, a lot of it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to most people. Most people don't know what sustainability means. They don't have a conceptual system, a system of framing for understanding sustainability. They won't get it. Uh, if you talk about, um, you know, sustainable consumption, what the hell is that? You know, cap and trade, duh, <laughs> you know, and so on. Once, as soon as you start talking about these technical terms, people will turn off because they don't have the systems used for it, unless conservatives have given them a system that says, uh, sustainability, they must be liberals, vote against them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or some, right? It's really important to have language that conveys these ideas, but there is a problem. And here is the problem. If you study the languages of the world, and my colleagues do, I'm a linguist, I have colleagues who go around the world doing field work, one of the things that they report back is that every language has a way to express causation. And no language has a way to express systemic causation, causation within a whole system. Direct causation, I pick this up, I put it down, direct causation. What happens in an ecological system is not there in the grammar of a language, anywhere in the world. Because your basic experience as a child growing up is about things like this, not about ecological systems. Okay? And it's not just the ecological systems, the economic system has the same problem. What happened is we, get a, we set up a global economic system. We had no way to talk about systemic causation and therefore no way to talk about systemic risk. And therefore we had a collapse of the global economic system. Now one thing that is usually not reported, and this is another very important thing, the way we think imposes systems of categories. And we categorize things in certain ways depending upon the frames that we have. <clears throat> so the question is, do we have the right frames? And often we don't. 
<clears throat> so let me give you an example. Uh, right now, the economy and the ecology are two different things. But in reality, they're not. And if you ask, what is the cause of the ecological collapse we're seeing with global warming and the economic collapse globally, it turns out to be the same cause, short-term greed, which in the classical theory of the market is supposed to be good. If everybody pursues their own self-interest, the self-interest of all will be maximized. Short-term greed is great, right? Wrong. It has produced global warming and it has produced economic collapse because we have no notion of understanding systems and systemic risk. Right? That is a crucial idea. That idea is not out there. You, know, you need to be able to think and talk about both together. Right? That's, you know, because people are used to categorizing them differently. There have to be new frames. How are new frames formed? They're formed by people talking about things in the two frames in such a way that people see the parallelism between them. And when the parallelism is there and can be constructed by the brain, the brain will be active, that part will be active in both cases, and the brain will form a new system. Okay? It will form a generalization. But you need to be able to talk about the economic collapse and the ecological collapse together, which we're not now doing. Now, uh, what I want to do at this point is stop and take your questions and just talk with you because I mean, you've you got enough lecturing. 